Gracie's sweater is a top-down sweater. You start at the neckline and you, we will make the yoke. So we chain 46. I'm using an H Susan Bates crochet hook, chain 46. So we have 46 chains on the hook, or 46 chains, and we're going to double crochet in the third chain from the hook and in each chain across. I am at the end of the row. I have executed 44 double crochets. I will chain two and turn, and we will begin row two. But first, I'd like for you to read the graphic that explains row two, and then I'll be back to do row two with you. So we're starting row two. I need to execute a double crochet in the first stitch and in the next two stitches. Next I need to do a cross stitch. You will yarn over, skip a stitch, and double crochet. I've skipped this stitch. I'm double crocheting in this stitch. Now I'm going to execute another double crochet, but I'm going to cross back in front of that stitch and execute a double crochet. And I pull the yarn over and across. Let me do that again for you. Yarn over, go in front, use that skipped stitch, pull the yarn over and across. Now execute my double crochet. Now I need to chain one and execute a V in this next stitch. A V is a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And we are, that is the front side. This V will help us turn the corner and go to shoulder one. This is front one. Now we're going to shoulder one. And shoulder one is chain one, execute a cross stitch. I just showed you how to do that. I skipped a stitch. Now I will be double crocheting in the next four stitches. One, two, three, four. I need to execute another cross stitch. cross back, chain one, and V in the next stitch. Now you can start seeing the corners are starting to take place. The V's make the corners, and you have a little lacy detail because you have a chain one and a cross stitch. Let's go across the back. We are starting the back. The back is chain one, cross stitch, and double crochet in the next 10 stitches. Alright, I've executed the 10th stitch right there. <clears throat> now we need to cross stitch. Chain 1, execute a V, Now we are going to shoulder two, chain one, cross stitch, chain one, 
and double crochet in the next four. And next is a cross stitch. This is shoulder two, remember, a cross stitch. Chain one and a V in the next. <clears throat> now we are on to front two. Chain one. We're getting there. I'm excited. Cross stitch. Double crochet in the last three stitches. One. Two. But I like to put my double crochet right underneath that chain and draw those loops up a little bit. It makes a straighter, smoother edge. Next. We will be heading to round three, but you have the beginning of a yoke. Each V makes a corner. Each V makes a corner. This is the back. This is the shoulder. This is the front. And we have the beginnings of a yoke. Now row three has a little bit of extra care that will need to be taken. Please take time to read the graphic and we'll move on to round three. So now we're at row three, and I hope you took time to read that graphic and grasp the fact that there will be no stitches in the double crochets of the V, but there will be a V in the chain one, and there will be a stitch in each chain one sp not space but in each of these chain ones there will be a double crochet so let's get started you will double crochet in the first double crochet and then double crochet in the next three double crochets all right now we need to make a cross stitch so that first stitch in the cross stitch is in the chain one let me show you that again. The first double crochet of the cross stitch will be in the chain one. I don't put it under the space or in the space. I put it in the chain, then cross back and execute the cross stitch and chain one. And V in the chain one space of the previous V. So that's front one. You have four stitch, four double crochets, and a cross stitch, and a chain one. Where previously you had three double crochets, a cross stitch, and a chain one. So let's move on to shoulder one of row three. So chain one, you will execute your first double crochet of your cross stitch in the first double crochet of the previous stitch then you will cross back and double crochet in the chain one. All right, now let's double crochet in the next six stitches. Now we need to execute a cross stitch. So the first double crochet will go in the chain one. Cross back hit that double crochet, make a chain, uh, make a cross stitch, excuse me, made a cross stitch, chain one and a V. Chain one, and there's your V. Now we are heading into the back, chain one, double crochet in the first double crochet, cross back and hit the, the chain once, hit the chain one, now double crochet in the next 12 stitches. We just finished the 12 stitches. Now we need to cross stitch and we start by placing the first double crochet in the chain one. Cross back, hit that double crochet, 
chain one. I mean, I do that pretty quick. I want to make sure you see that I do that. Chain one, then a V. Now we are heading into shoulder two. Shoulder two, I think you can see the pattern. I have chained one. I'm going to execute a cross stitch. Hit that first double crochet, cross back, hit the chain one. And now double crochet in the next six stitches. Now it's time for a cross stitch. Double crochet in the chain one. Cross back, cross stitch, chain one, double crochet, uh, a V. Chain one, cross stitch, and double crochet in the remaining four stitches. And I will place my double crochet under that chain two space. Chain two and turn. Now we are heading into round four. Round four is a duplication of the same pattern as well as round five, round six, round seven, and round eight. The crochet pattern itself is found on Chrissy's Over the Mountain Crochet.com. Look for Gracie's Valentine sweater. I am making this for Gracie. It will be a two toddler size. If you are making, there will be instruction there for you to make a 12 month, an 18 month, and a three toddler size. Follow the instructions there, but I will be proceeding on to round nine. I will meet up with you at round nine where we make the underarm chain. And I'll explain to you some increases that need to be made at the underarm on round 10. And uh, we have a little bit of work to do before we meet back up again. Just put it on pause, go read the pattern. I'll be back with you in a moment. So I have finished up through row eight. And as you can see, it's looking like a bodice. If I were to hold this together, you can see this looks like the front of a sweater. And so the row nine is where we are going to, the row nine is for a two toddler, is where we will add the underarm chain that hooks both shoulder, shoulder points together. So let's get started with that. I have chained two and turned at the end of row eight. So I will double crochet in the next 10 stitches. And just as before, I will be skipping this double crochet and a dub executing a double crochet in the chain one, crossing back, double crochet in the double crochet skipped to make a cross stitch, chain one, in the V we will make a double crochet only. We will not be executing a V. Chain two. And come across skipping all of the shoulder stitches and execute a double crochet in the chain V in the in the V stitch in the chain one of the V stitch. All right, chain one, cross stitch, just as before, crossing back and hitting that chain one. And now let's double crochet in the next 24 stitches. I'm at the last stitch before the cross stitch. So let's execute that cross stitch by a double crochet in the chain one. Double crochet in the stitch that was skipped, 
a chain one and a double crochet just one double crochet in the V chain two and come across skipping all of the shoulder stitches just as before and double crochet in the V chain one cross stitch just as before a double crochet in that double crochet cross back and hit that chain one and then double crochet in the remaining 10 stitches and the tenth stitch. Now we're at the end of row nine and we have a little bodice with armhole chain. Let me put a graphic up for you to read and then we will proceed on to row ten. So row ten, um, I've chained two and turned I will execute a double crochet and each stitch across that is a double crochet and is not part of the cross stitch and you'll see what I mean here in just a second just a double crochet in each double crochet that is not a part of the cross stitch There you have it. Now when I get to the cross stitch, I will be executing the cross stitch directly on top of the cross stitch. So I skipped the first stitch in the cross stitch and a double crochet, crossing back. I will not be placing any more stitches in the chain one throughout the rest of the pattern, but I still need to chain one double crochet in this double crochet and then double crochet in each underarm chain so that's two double crochets one more that's two in the underarm chain then a double crochet in this double crochet so this will give you four double crochet stitches under the arm but we do execute a chain one here and then cross stitch right on the top of that cross stitch. All right, now a double crochet all the way across. I'll meet you there at the end. All right, I am now at the cross stitch. So remember, the cross stitch, cross stitch will be directly on top of the cross stitch. Chain one, a double crochet in the double crochet, skipping that chain one. A double crochet in each underarm chain, one. two and then a double crochet in this double crochet that was previously in the V and chain one and a cross stitch and a double crochet across the front And we are at the end of row nine. We will chain two and turn. And the next few rows will be a mimic of this. You will double crochet across, 
When you hit a cross stitch, you execute a cross stitch right on top of that cross stitch. Chain one, execute double crochets under the arm, execute a double, ah, uh, chain, chain one, cross stitch, double crochets across the back, hit that cross stitch right on top of the cross stitch, chain one, double crochets at the underarm, chain one, cross stitch, and double crochets across. And that's how the next few rows will be executed until you get to row 13. And I will meet you at row 13. Row 13 will be an increase row, and I want to show you how to do that. So I'm at the end of round tw row 12, and I will be showing you how to increase at row 13. How you will increase is underneath the arm, but isn't this looking cute? It's looking like a sweater. I'm getting excited. I always get excited at this point. The bodice is so much quicker to crochet, and it's just it. This is where you can add your personality to it. You can change up stitches if you'd like. It's a good place. But we're going to head into round th row 13. Let me get you started. We will double crochet across until we hit the cross stitches. And I'll meet you at that cross stitch. I am at the cross stitch. I will execute that cross stitch right on top of the previous cross stitch chain one and i'm at the underarm i need to increase that's two double crochets in either this stitch or this stitch it's in the middle i think i'll take a double crochet right here two double crochets right here a double crochet and a double crochet and you know how this goes a chain one a cross stitch and then we will crochet with double crochet stitches across the back. And then when we get to the underarm, and then a cross stitch and a chain one. And when we get to the underarm, we will increase on the second underarm at row 13. Round 14 is no increases. Round 15, or row 15, I apologize for saying round. Row 15 has an increase at the underarm as well. Now from here on out, you will make the cardigan, you will make as many rows as it takes to, to achieve 13 inches. So from here on out, after the increase rows, you are looking for 13 inches from the back of the top of the center neck to the bottom. And then after row, after that 13 inches, you will be adding an edging to the bottom. And I will meet you at the edging rounds. We're getting close. So I have crocheted 23 rows to make a little over 13 inches, which is where I want to be with the two toddler. The measurements will be in the on the website, Chrissy's Over the Mountain Crochet.com. For the size that you are wanting this is a longer cardigan hey and if you could hit the like and subscribe button i sure would appreciate it i have a little tail i need to weave in i'll do that later i have a an odd stitch count and an odd stitch count is just fine um the edging requires a an even stitch count but with a cross stitch you can fudge with that so that's what i'm going to show you how to do so in order to do the cross stitch, we need to single crochet, the cross stitch edge rather, we need to single crochet in each uh, stitch across. So we'll chain one and single crochet, turn and single crochet in each stitch across. I am coming to the end of the single crochet row for the cross stitch edging and I wanted to show you um, that I am single crocheting in every stitch including the chain stitch and the cross stitch and in each stitch across and like I said I have an 
odd number of stitches now this next round row excuse me this next row is a cross stitch row so I'm beginning the cross stitch portion of the uh, cross stitch edging I will chain three so I'm going to turn if I had an even number of stitches I would count this chain three as a stitch I would begin my cross stitch in the third stitch and cross back and hit and hit that second stitch so this would represent a double crochet and a cross stitch but since I have an odd number of stitches I will place I will place my double crochet on my my first double crochet on the cross stitch then I will cross back and crochet at the base of that chain three and that makes a nice it still makes a very nice edge so let's let me make a few more cross stitches for you this will be the right side of your work um, now you can determine throughout the rest of the pattern that this row you can put a marker on your sweater because you want these cross stitches to um, show to the front so put a marker just somewhere on your sweater to show this is the right side of the sweater that will help you when you're making your sleeves and when you're attaching the collar let me make a couple more and then I'll meet you at the end of the round and we're almost finished with this part we're ready to move on to the sleeves and the sleeves are pretty quick the sleeves are extra long and are made to have a rolled back cuff but I'll be back in a moment remember this is the right side of your work you might want to place a few markers all across the bodice just to remind you where the right side of the work is I am at the end of the cross stitch round you can see I've placed markers all across the um, <clears throat> bodice the front of the bodice so that I know this is the right side of my work and as you can see I have one two three stitches left so I will make my last cross stitch then end with one double crochet in this last stitch but I don't want to put that double crochet right there I'm not sure I want that little bumpy spot but it really would not matter since I'm going to put an edge down the front but it's just a treatment that I like to uh, do for most sweaters is I like to stick my bypass that uh, uh, single crochet space or bypass I like to bypass those loops on the single crochet and head on over to that chain one space and execute that double crochet right there so I will meet you at the beginning of the last round on this edge stitch then we'll move on to the sleeves so we will be where we are ready to finish the edging on the bodice and we do that by chaining one we chained one at the end of the last round and turned and now we are going to execute a single crochet in each stitch across super simple single crochet and now we are just about done and we can move on to the sleeves Woohoo! one last thing I wanted to show you that might be tricky for a beginner is I have single crocheted all the way across I single crocheted through to the last cross stitch this last stitch will be placed in the third chain right there let me do that again this last stitch is placed in the third chain of that beginning chain three and then you're done woohoo 
Ooh, now let's move on to that sleeve. I like to make a standing double crochet. This is an advanced technique, but I think it's pretty easy. Um, you make a slip knot, hold the yarn on your hook, you hold on to this tail, hold on to this tail, and you wrap, you wrap the yarn around your hook holding on to that tail so that the slip knot stays underneath. Now this isn't anything that you pull and are very tight on. Now just put your yarn. There you have the beginnings of a double crochet, but I need to keep that taut. I need to keep that knot turned to the underneath side. There we go. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two, and I have a standing, let me move that, a standing double crochet right under that arm hole area, right in the center. Now I'm going to continue and proceed to double crochet around the arm's eye. Alright, so this is two, three, I'm going to want to have 31 stitches. Okay, I'm at 27 stitches. I'm going to skip the chain one and hit 28. And I will hit this stitch. 29. 30. Did you see how I did that? Now I am back at the bottom of the arm side. Whoops, I missed. I missed a stitch. I missed this stitch. Let me grab that, get that yarn tail out of the way, 30, and 31. Now, that's just to give you an estimation of how many you need in the, around the arm. You can do 30. I wouldn't go any more than 33. It will make too bulky of an arm and a, make would create a lot of bulk under the arm. So I'm going to join to the top of that first double crochet. There we go. Now the next few rounds need to have decreases. I will put a graphic up that will show you how to execute the next few rounds. The next round there is no decrease. Rounds 3 through 14 have a decrease on the underside of the sleeve and I will show you how to do that but let me first put a graphic up there for you to see. I'll be back. So round two is finished. There are no increases, decreases, nothing happening on round two. Round two is a double crochet in each stitch around. The next rounds, round three through fourteen, there will be a decrease one decrease and here's how I do that I on when I am heading this direction I go ahead and I execute a double crochet in the joining stitch then the, then I to decrease in order to decrease I yarn over pull through through two yarn over pull up a loop pull through two in the next stitch so I have three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three, that decreases to one stitch. So that's how I do this in round three. Now I'm going to go all the way back around and join. Then in row four, I will go all the way around and then I will decrease on this side. So the decreases are staggered. So 
Row 3's decrease is right here. Row 4's decrease will be right there. Row 5's will be on that side. Row 6 will be on this side. 7, 8, 9, 10. You get, you get the picture. I am at the end of round 4 and I need to decrease. I have one more double crochet to go. Now I'm going to decrease and I decrease by yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over and pull up a loop in the next stitch, pull through two. I have three loops on my hook. I'll pull through all three. That decreases my stitch count by one stitch. Then I join to the top of the double crochet, chain two, and I begin again. Now if alternating the decreases on either side of the join is confusing to you, just place a marker where your last decrease was. I always break these little markers. There we go, I didn't break it. Now I know, there's the decrease, I know that after I double crochet in the joining stitch, I'll need to decrease in these next two stitches for round five. So uh, I'll meet you at the end of round 14, and remember, I will be decreasing on either side of the beginning of the joining chain, either side, and this is all at the underarm. This is where I want my decreases, all at the underarm area under the sleeve. All right, I'll be right back. I'll leave you a graphic to look at, and I'll be back at the end of round 14. So I have crocheted up through to round 14 on the sleeve, and you can see a very nice shape has taken place on the sleeve. I have my markers on the front, reminding me where the front of the uh, sweater is. You can see a little bit of a gap, but the edging will take care of that. There will be a cross stitch edging here. Now, the next, let me, let me point out how, uh, let me point out the, um, the decreases for you. All right, you can see this is the joining chain all the way up through there, and then every other round has a decrease, except I decreased twice right here. That decrease should be over here on this side, but there's a decrease here, a decrease here, a decrease here, a decrease here just every on either side I will get that fit I will get this fixed um, the cat had to be put out and it and it threw me off but anyway so round 15 will be a, a double crochet in each stitch around round 16 will be an increase two increases I will put an increase we'll put a marker here so that I remember I will put an increase right at this edge and then an increase at the top that will open up the sleeve a little bit so that it can roll back and fit over top of the tapered edge once I get the trim, once I get the uh, cross stitch edging on it. I'm excited. This is turning into a cute sweater. I hope you are enjoying this. I'll be back. So I finished round 16. Round 16 has an increase here. Two stitches in one stitch makes an increase and an increase right here. All right, so we're ready to head on into the cross stitch edge round. So we're going to chain one and turn. Because this is going to be turned back, we're going to want this to be uh, on the inside of the sleeve. So it's a single crochet in each stitch around. I put my first single crochet right there. And in each stitch around, I'll meet you at the end. I am, I am at the end of the single crochet round of the cross stitch edging. I'm going to join to the top of the first single crochet. Now, the next round is the cross stitch round. So you will chain three and you will yarn over, cross back, 
and hit the stitch behind the chain three and execute a double crochet for the first crossed stitch. Now, if you have an even amount of stitches, it works out perfectly as you cross stitch, excuse me, as you cross stitch around the sleeve, you will land with your last cross stitch in these two stitches. And then you just join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. And But if you have an odd amount of stitches, you will cross stitch around and you will end up with this stitch left, just one stitch left. So what you will do is put your double crochet right here and then cross back and execute your double crochet, your last double crochet for the cross stitch right there. It won't affect the size of the sleeve. Now the reason I'm giving you these tips is because I'm working a two toddler sweater. And the written pattern is also on my website, Chrissy's Over the Mountain Crochet.com. It does have ads. The charts will not be in there. There are not many charts for this pattern. So you can purchase an ad free PDF that is printable from Ravelry or Etsy. The links will be in the description when the PDF is ready. If you're watching this and I've just posted, it won't be ready yet. It will be ready in the future. But look what a nice treatment this is that is happening here. And remember, I am doing a two toddler size. When you hit round what I called round 16, that may be round 12 for you, maybe round 13. You know, I'm not sure yet. It depends on the size you are working with. The length of these sleeves is a little bit longer so that it can roll back and the child can wear the sweater just a little bit longer. And with the length that this sweater has, I believe that's a big possibility. So that will help you to choose the size that you are wanting. Let me finish this cross stitch round and I'll meet you at the end. I'm at the end of the cross stitch round for the sleeve and I only have one stitch left so I have an odd number of stitches. Here's how I want to show you how to finish this. Yarn over, I'm skipping this stitch, I'm going to crochet in the base of this stitch. This stitch has already been used but I'm going to use it again. I'm going to use this stitch one more time. It's not going to hurt the drape. It won't hurt in any way whatsoever. So there's a double crochet. I'm crossing back and I'm hitting that stitch, this stitch that I skipped. Now I'm going to join to the top of this chain three. I have to be careful that I don't join that in that double crochet. I want to grab that chain three right there. Oh, there we go. How nice does that look? This is the last round on the sleeve so now it's chain one single crochet in the joining stitch and in each stitch around. Let me do that quickly for you. I'll speed up the camera and then I'll show you how nicely it folds back. Now I'm at the end, I'm going to join to the top of that first single crochet and I am done with this portion of the sleeve. And as you can see, the way it is shaped, it is shaped so that it will fold back and this portion of the sleeve won't be bunchy when I do. So let's do that. Let's see how that looks. There we go. Now, isn't that nice? I sometimes like to add a ripple edge, but I think I'm leaving that off of this design, but that's sweet. Um, <clears throat> you could fold it back just a little bit farther if the sleeve is too long. I do love having a design that a child can grow with. Now, we're off to do the front edge. The front edge will have that same cross stitch edge treatment that we put along the bottom of the sweater. So I'm excited. We're getting close. 
I'll put up a graphic for you to read over and then I will come back and demonstrate how to put the front edge on this little sweater. Now to put the front edge on this sweater, it's a single crochet row, a cross stitch row, and a finishing single crochet row. <laughs> now I'm going to want my cross stitches to show to the front. So I will start by attaching my yarn with a slip stitch on the inside. My, the front of the single crochets will be on the inside and then when I turn my work that will put my cross stitches to the outside, the visible side, the side that shows. So I join my yarn in a various amount of ways but when it's a single crochet I just put my hook in where I want it to be, pull the yarn up, chain one, single crochet, and I will just place single crochets up the side of the sweater, making sure that, and I'm going to, tr I'm not going to wrap so much. I don't necessarily want holes. Sometimes that's a treatment that I use is I just go down and I dig in and I go around the whole um, post of a stitch, but this sweater I'm wanting to go into the post of the stitches if I'm able to. I just like that treatment a little better. Um, if you have too many stitches close together you will have a ripple on your edge. So try to be um, Try to judge and gauge where you put your stitches so that they're not pulling too much and so that they're not bunching up. This is a good um, little distance, maybe. I can't say one stitch in the side of each row because sometimes that just doesn't work either. I just generally place the stitch up along the side and if it's nice and smooth, then I'm happy. And just don't worry about your stitch count. As I've shown you before, that cross stitch is a very forgiving stitch that you can adjust and it won't cause you any trouble. Now, in general, both sides of your sweater needs to have, in general, the same amount or close to the same amount of stitching. But like I said, I'll show you how to compensate on the cross stitch row if you have an odd number of stitches and if you have an even number of stitches. And I'll meet you at the end of this row. So I am just about to finish the single crochet row that goes up, up, up the front of the sweater. I'm working from the back side, the wrong side, I'm at this edge. I am just at the corner and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to get two, two stitches right in here. I'm going to try. We'll see if it works. I'm going to get one stitch. Yep, it's going to work right here. And I actually don't think I need a stitch right there, but I'm going to put one there anyway. There we go. And we have a nice smooth edge. Now it's chain three. We are going to chain three and turn. This chain three will act as a double crochet. Now we are going to proceed to execute cross stitches. I'm going to skip this stitch right here and I'm going to cross stitch all the way down the front. I'll meet you down at the end. Whoops, I put that in the wrong. I'll meet you down at the end and I'll show you how to compensate just in case you have an even or odd number of stitches. And I'll meet you there. So I am at the end. I've executed the cross stitches all the length of the front and I get to the end and I have the right amount of stitches so that I don't have to compensate in case I have an odd number of stitches. I didn't know going into this if I had an odd or an even number of stitches, but as you can see, I have one, two, three stitches left. 
I have enough for a cross stitch in these two stitches and then a double a stand a double crochet that will finish off that edge in this last stitch but as you know before I like to kind of drop up kind of get it over to the side a little bit more so let me do that for you but let's say I'm going to fill this in with just a double crochet let's say that I only had two stitches left so here's what I would do I would hit that stitch and cross back and execute a cross stitch and then I would drop over to the side I want to get more than one strand I want two strands let me get dig it down in there there we go and then I would execute a double crochet and that doesn't really change the shape at all obviously I don't have to do that this time what I can what I get to do since this is even I get to execute a cross stitch in these last two stitches well that didn't work there we go let's try it again cross stitch in these last two stitches and then put that double crochet right here I'm going to bypass the stitch because that's just what I like to do I like to have a little bit more a little bit of a smooth edge and that does give me that now when I work those tails in that will be a beautiful smooth edge the next step is chain one and single crochet in every stitch up the front so chain one turn and single crochet in every stitch up the front side and I'll meet you at the end of this round row excuse me I'll meet you at the end of this row so I am at the end of the single crochet edge on the front edge and I have one more single crochet to execute in the double crochet and then I have this chain three this beginning chain three I'm going to execute a single crochet in that beginning chain three and we are done with the front now I'm going to count my cross stitches one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen cross stitches I'm going to want to mirror the other side with 17 cross stitches so I will gauge the second side how many single crochets I have so that I can have 17 cross stitches and one double crochet at the end on each side at the end on each side so let's move on to the collar I will put a graphic up there the collar is the same edging except I will be putting a double crochet around the collar and then execute the cross stitch edge I'll show you how to do that next so the front edge is on both sides of the sweater I have both sleeves on the cuffs are turned up now it's time to do the collar we will attach the collar on the wrong side so we'll start at the right corner I will be using the standing double crochet stitch so I have a tight grip on that yarn tail wrapped my yarn around the hook and I'm inserting in the corner first double crochet then proceed to double crochet around the neck edge when I get to the when I get past the cross, cross stitch edge I will start inserting my hook down in between the stitches there you go down in between this collar is going to roll back is this is the inside so the collar will roll back so I want the double crochet stitches to show the next row that after we after we execute all of these double crochet stitches around the neckline 
then we will do the cross stitch edge which is a row of single crochets a row of cross stitches and last a row of single crochets then once we have that finished all we need to do is make the pockets sew the pockets on and then find the buttons that we need I'll meet you at the end of this row I am at the end I have double crocheted in each stitch around the neckline I have two more double crochet stitches to execute one right in that post of that stitch and then dropping down and grabbing that single crochet I will chain one turn and single crochet in each stitch around and remember it's not that essential to worry about whether you have an even or an odd number of stitches because that cross stitch round is very or cross stitch is very forgiving in how to execute and um, have an even edge so I'll meet you at the end of this row so I have single crocheted all the way around the neckline I'm going to chain three and turn this will represent this chain three will represent a double crochet now I'm going to start executing I will not put a stitch right here I'm going to start executing the cross stitches and then I will meet you at the end of the row to remind you how to handle whether you have an even number of stitches or an odd number of stitches and I'll be back so I'm at the end of the round I had an odd number of stitches so I will be placing my first double crochet right here in the next to last stitch and then crossing back and using that stitch that had been previously used and then a standing not a standing but a sing but a double crochet in the last stitch now it's chain one turn and a single crochet in every stitch across and we will be finished with a collar at that point then all we need to do is finish by making two little pockets we're almost finished oh and the buttons we I get to go look through my button box I'll meet you at the end of this row I'm at the end I'm so excited I have one single crochet left I need to place a single crochet in this chain in the third chain of the beginning chain three which represented a double crochet and we are finished with a little sweater except for the pockets let's turn this around the right way and let's get a good look at this isn't that collar cute it will roll back now we just need to find or choose I love to look through my button box we need to choose the buttons that we will use but first I'm going to show you how to make the pockets I'll be right back oh so I have found buttons that I like really well and I have made one pocket and I have sewn it on I'll show you how to make the pocket and when you sew the pocket on you will be sewing it over top of that last double crochet row before you start the uh, the last double crochet row before the cross stitch trim and the pocket is very easy you chain 12 double crochet in the third chain from the hook and in each chain across then you will turn and execute two more rows of double crochet you will chain two and turn and execute two more rows of double crochet 
Let me do that for you very quickly, and I will meet you at the end of that third double crochet row. I am at the end of the third double crochet row. I will double crochet in this stitch. Now the last double crochet, I do loop it around that chain two. That gives me that straight edge on the side of the pocket that I like. All right, so now we're gonna chain one, turn and single crochet all the way across. And if you notice, I single crocheted all the way across, then I executed that last single crochet under the chain three loop. Now I'm going to chain three and turn and execute a cross stitch row. The cross stitch row will start, I will skip this stitch and this chain three counts as a double crochet. So I skipped the second stitch, double crocheted in the third, crossing back and I will continue with the cross stitches across the row Now I am at the end and I will double crochet in the last stitch, but I will put the double crochet right here. I won't put the double crochet right in this spot, in this stitch. I will put it, wrap it down into that chain or that loop that is on the side to help make a smooth edge. All right, now it's chain one, single crochet across. And the single crochet loops under that chain three space. This is the last stitch of the pocket. This is the front of the pocket. And you need, you can, now it's ready to sew on. You may want to block this beforehand, but it's ready to sew on. Pin it in place with some straight pins. Sew that on, sew on your buttons, and you have a finished Cardigan. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I enjoyed making this sweater. Now there are other tutorials that will be linked to this um, sweater design. There are Valentine's skirts to go with this Valentine's sweater. And remember, you can find the crochet pattern, the written crochet pattern, at ChrissysOverTheMountainCrochet.com. Remember, I wrote, I demonstrated a size two toddler. So any reference to rows and rounds were in reference to the two toddler written pattern. There are directions for 12 month, 18 month, and three toddler, and the two toddler is what I demonstrated. So it was good to have you on my side of the mountain. I hope you'll come again soon.